Patrick, in trying to think about experimental designs to understand free will, what's the role of memory? Well, I think memory is really important uh, in the application of volition. So, for example, if you're unfortunate enough to have any contact with the law, then one of the things that the, the legal system wants to know is, did you intend to do it, right? Because a, a crime which is premeditated and done with intent is severe. Now, you're asked, did you intend to do it? But you have to answer that question when you're in court, <laughs> long after you actually had the intention, sure. right? So the, the law really assumes that we remember whether we intended to do something or not. And as far as I could tell, that assumption had never actually been tested experimentally. There are quite a lot of views in the current psychological literature which suggests that we don't remember our intentions because we, we retrospectively yes. attribute intentions to ourselves even when we never actually had them. Mm. So we did an experiment uh, recently which, um, again, is a very reduced down, uh, limited experiment to see whether people could remember whether they had intended to move their left hand or move their right. Now, that sounds pretty easy, but this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. The person has to freely choose to move their left, their left hand or their right hand to press a button. And at the same time that they make that voluntary action, we, as experimenters, are going to impose on them an involuntary movement. We're going to make either their left hand twitch involuntarily or their right hand twitch involuntarily. Yeah. And we can do that with, with a very interesting and important uh, technique called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Mm -hmm. So transcranial magnetic stimulation is a method which allows us to make neurons in the motor parts of the brain fire artificially by discharging a, by creating a brief but strong electromagnetic field with a coil that's held immediately over the motor cortex. So the participants in our experiment had two of these electromagnetic coils, one here, which would stimulate the left motor cortex and make the right hand twitch, and one here, which would stimulate the right motor cortex and make the left hand twitch. Mm. So at the same time as the person voluntarily pressed the button with either their left or their right hand, they involuntarily twitch left or twitch right. And the question was, we, we, were, we were going to ask them either, which hand did you voluntarily move? Was it the left one or was it the right one? But sometimes we would ask them, which hand did we involuntarily make twitch? Was it the left one or was it the right one? So the person had to remember either their voluntary actions or their involuntary twitches. And they occurred at the same time. time. That's right. So we asked them to make the voluntary actions when they heard the third of three beeps. So it's beep, beep, press. And we discharged the oh, magnetic yes. coil, so they twitched at that moment. Now, the really interesting thing happens when the voluntary action and the involuntary movement are on different hands. We call mm -hmm. that the incongruent condition. So suppose the participant freely decides to press the button with their left hand. And at the same time, we make them twitch with their right hand. Right, right. And then a little bit later, we will ask them, on that trial, which hand did you voluntarily move? The question then is, are they going to get confused and remember what, the, what we involuntarily did to them instead of what they voluntarily did? Or is it going to be the other way around? Are, if we ask them, which hand did we involuntarily twitch? Are they going to get confused and remember what they did rather than what right. we did to them? Now, the way I've described it, I hope will will explain that really this is a way of looking at what do we remember more strongly? What we intended to do or what our body actually did? Right. And our results are quite interesting because they show that what we remember most strongly is what we intended to do, not what our body actually did. And that's scientifically quite revealing because it suggests that the idea that we simply confabulate an intention retrospectively we based on what our body did based on how we moved right. that can't be right because in that case you would expect that the way we our bodies were involuntarily moved would capture what we thought we had intended whereas in fact we found the opposite what we had intended captured 
our memory of how our body had actually moved. So both things actually occurred at the same time, Correct. and then some time later with other things, you were able to ask them what they remembered happening sometime before. From that previous trial. Right. And they were much more accurate in what, in what they voluntarily did rather than what their body did artificially. Absolutely. So that, that, what that would mean is that our intentions have at least some significance in memory. Okay, they're retained. So, so let's uh, 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 connect that with your initial comment about the law. What, what, how, how would that have practical meaning? Well, if you, if you wanted to support the institution of the law, which of course we all do, um, then you probably will be quite pleased with that result. Because if we'd found the opposite, if we'd found that people have no memory for their own intentions, but only rem remember how their body had moved, mm. then the entire edifice of the law would collapse because there would never be any point in in the legal system asking, did you intend to do it? Because mm. you would not know. So at least the, the, the law is on slightly firmer ground, mm. if you like, um, after this, uh, given this result than if we had found the opposite. But there's still perhaps an interesting point, because obviously this is not a, a, a legally significant mm. crime situation. This is a very simple laboratory experiment. And also, what we found is people could remember their intention from one trial before, but they were really pretty bad at remembering their intention from three trials before. And if you ask them about their intention from five trials before, they were performing at chance. They really didn't know. Now, I hope that the law can work over much longer timescales than the few seconds that our trials take in a lab experiment.